Hey, welcome back for another episode of Porn Brain Rewire, the podcast with me, Dr. Trish Lee. Uh, I'm glad you're here because today we're going to talk about how to heal erectile dysfunction and delayed ejaculation. So we are talking about sexual dysfunction and how you can heal it. So this is an important episode and I am recording this episode post-workout, wearing a hat to cover up workout hair. Um, for a client of mine who I just got off of a meeting a little while ago with him and I was going to try to put together some resources, but I decided I would just make a podcast episode for him and all of you. So uh, here we go. This is what we're going to do in this episode. And it's going to be a familiar framework, familiar framework, and we are going to think about it in a different way way applying it to sexual dysfunction. So we're going to talk about unwire, rewire, and hardwire. That's our familiar framework. And we are going to think about it in terms of stop desensitizing the reward center in your brain. That's the unwire portion today. The rewire portion is how do you heal the reward center and the reward pathways so that they work again So we're going to cover how that desensitization happens and what it's doing to you in terms of sexual function or dysfunction. And then we're going to talk about how to heal it. Lastly, in the third section is going to be your brain hack strategies for the day in terms of how do you hardwire your brain again for healthy sexual function after you've unwired and rewired it? How do you turn up the heat in the bedroom again after you have defrosted the situation in the unwire and rewire. So we've got a big, awesome episode uh, in store today. So let us dig in. Number one, stop desensitizing the reward center in your brain to heal erectile dysfunction and delayed ejaculation. If you haven't heard me talk about this before, uh, stop what you're doing and sit down and take some notes if you struggle with erectile dysfunction because this is the bread and butter of what causes erectile dysfunction and I'm going to give it to you in a quick and easy fashion here that's all based on neuroscience. So if you struggle with erectile dysfunction, this is an arousal dysfunction in the brain. The reason that it happens is you've been hitting the easy button for sexual arousal at very high levels for a long time. And for most people, what that looks like is frequent, consistent, and building in intensity porn use, coupled with masturbation to reach orgasm. So in doing so, what you've done is you've conditioned your brain to go back to unhealthy sexuality to get high levels of dopamine. When you do that, you're basically hitting the easy button, literally on your phone or computer, to get a 15 plus level of dopamine. So on a one to 10 scale, you hit a button and you get 15. And when you do that over and over and over, your brain is conditioned to go, hmm, maybe I just hit a button and I'll get 15 plus in terms of dopamine and sexual arousal. Well, over time, tolerance builds and you need to hit a bigger button for higher intensity to get a 16 or a 17 or an 18. Now, now we go back to time in the bedroom with your honey And your honey on a good day is probably a nine, right? It's difficult to be a nine all the time when you've got five and a half kids and a business and a nonprofit trying to save the world from porn use. It is difficult to be a nine. Sometimes you have to wear a hat to try to even pretend to pull off a seven. But your honey on a good day, probably a nine. On a bad day when she's frustrated with you, maybe a two. So now you're going back into the bedroom and you've got, let's just call it a five, average. You've got an average experience going on. You're at a five, but your brain is used to a 15. So the arousal gap that you need to close is 10 points. Your brain's used to 15. In the bedroom, you've got a five situation. You've got a 10 point spread, literally, in the amount of dopamine that your brain needs to get aroused to be able to achieve an erection 
and be able to move yourself towards orgasm in a timely, enjoyable fashion. This arousal gap is because of dysfunction in the brain. Because of hitting that easy button, what has happened is the dopamine receptors, D2 receptors in your brain have been desensitized. They no longer respond to a five, six, seven, eight, or nine. They only respond to a 15 plus. So when it's time to be with your honey and there's no way she can be a 15 plus because we know that porn is a super normal stimulus, meaning it is above a 10, it's an 11 plus always. So she has no chance of meeting that 15 level that your brain is used to because those dopamine receptors have been desensitized. The pathways for the reward no longer work in the same way that they did before you found porn and before you kept hitting that button over and over and over again. Hebb's Law says neurons that fire together wire together. You have wired your brain to need a very high level stimulus to feel aroused to achieve an erection and orgasm. I will let you sit with that for a minute before I move to number two because that desensitization is the problem and you must stop desensitizing your brain. Now, if you are joining me for the first time ever in this episode of Porn Brain Rewire, please go back to the last episode on the slippery slope of porn escalation and relapse because in there, I talk about some of the behaviors that count in this desensitization in more depth. But here, I'm gonna give you a few of them. Number one is porn use. It's the number one way that people act out in a hypersexual way. Number two is lusting or checking people out. Number three, fantasy. Now, because of so much porn use, many people don't even need an external stimuli. All they need is the internal stimuli of fantasy. So you can actually hit that dopamine button without even hitting a real button anymore. There's just an imaginary one in your brain when you fire up fantasy. We know that masturbation is another event that is will trigger this response towards this high level of dopamine. There's other acting out ways that people will act out sexually. If you don't know about them, I don't really want to share them with you, but they involve other human beings. There's paid sex. There's websites where you can pay for different interactions. There's dating apps that you can have a hookup. So those are all examples of unhealthy sexuality. And again, you can go back to the last episode because those behaviors lead to desensitization in your brain. Social media and sexual media are another really high one. They're one level, they're one tick on this continuum underneath porn. So, so many people will try to stay out of porn, but they will watch sexually influenced videos or they will watch different people just to get a dopamine hit. So you have to become aware of this because likely you're desensitizing your brain in multiple ways across each day. And then you go home and you try to figure out your erectile dysfunction, even though you've spent the day creating that arousal dysfunction, but you're not aware of it. So hear me before we move to number two, the problem is consumption or acting out of hypersexual behaviors with frequency, consistency, and especially escalation of intensity. Those different acts and media are desensitizing your brain. They are making it so that when you go home to be with your partner and you want to get your groove on and you want to raise your freak flag, you are not able to because it's always under a number 10 arousal level and your brain is used to 15 plus. So hear that, digest that, and know that that is based on neuroscience. Now, number two, after that dramatic entrance of the unwiring of desensitization, it's dramatic because I'm passionate about it. 
our relationships are being destroyed. Your relationships probably being destroyed because of this super normal stimulus that you think is bringing you pleasure, but it's actually bringing you a lot of pain. We know that, and that's what I call the pain pleasure paradox. It's processed in the same area of your brain and it's giving you pleasure in the moment and it's giving you all that heartache of erectile dysfunction and delayed ejaculation when you're not in that behavior or in your screen. Okay, so moving on to number two because that's the unwire, we're going to move to rewire. What do you do about it? What you do about it is you heal your brain. So I told you this episode post-workout is for one of my clients and what I wanted him to know is number one, he has engaged in professional neurofeedback with me. We have the graphs and the charts that show that his brain is well on the way to healing. So it started very high in a wired and tired pattern. And I'm going to put an example in the YouTube video of this podcast episode, if I remember. And everybody say, uh, a prayer that I remember because that's something that I forget to do. But I want to share these graphs with you so you know that what I do is very measurable. So we saw that his brain was using a wired and tired pattern and that pattern has healed over the last few months. So his brain is in a much healthier arousal mode. When he started, his brain was in the wired and tired mode. A wired and tired brain will go out of its way for self-soothing and self-stimulation to offset stress and to offset overstimulation. So a brain that's wired and tired wants soothing and stimulation. Thus, that brain pattern has changed over time. That is an unhealthy, hyper and hypo aroused brain when we started. Wired, hyper arousal, tired, hypo arousal and we see that brain shift into a healthy arousal pattern. So now that his brain's in a healthy arousal pattern, what happens for many people is healthy sexuality and healthy arousal will just come online by itself. But there's a big but, and the reason that it comes online for some people, which is number three, the hardwire. So we're gonna get there in a minute, and that's the part I really want him to hear, but just know when you're using your mind and your body along with brain training, that is the trifecta of combining conscious, subconscious, and unconscious factors. You're training your brain at an unconscious level. You don't have to do anything to train it besides using the tech. So if you're in professional neurofeedback with me, I'm able to set the system to whatever your brain needs based upon your QEEG brain map. If you're interested in this assessment at all, please visit drtrishlee.com. It's the high level assessment that I do as a first step to working with me personally. I see what your brain is doing. How do we adjust your brain to the optimal level unless we know what it's doing at the start? So I see what your brain is doing in the QEG brain map and we spend an hour together making a plan. Sometimes that plan includes working with me in high level professional neurofeedback. When we do it, I have lots of charts and graphs. You have charts and graphs. You know what your brain is doing within every neurofeedback session and across. And just to share, neurofeedback doesn't put anything into your brain. It gives your brain feedback of how it's performing in sounds based upon how your brain is using electrical energy. You're using the wired and tired pattern. The sounds are low and you want to hear them and they're they're less than optimal. When your brain's using that medium speed, calm focus pattern, then the sounds play loud and your brain's getting the ideal feedback and it knows that it's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. I liken it to a bicep curl. If you want strong biceps, which I was just doing bicep curls and my, my handsome man Declan came out to improve my form. How cute's that, right? came out, had to tuck those elbows in a little bit more, had to pull them back a little more, but my buys are gonna be showing it pretty soon. But when I'm doing a bicep curl, I have to have good form and I have to activate the muscle. And if I activate the muscle, what happens? It grows and it gets into better form. I don't have to think, okay, bicep, do 
this, contract, get better, get stronger. I don't have to cognitively think about it. I just have to engage in the workout. Neurofeedback's like a workout for your brain that engages it in the optimal pattern so that it stays. And it is a high level service that I provide for many people. And if it feels like something that you're interested in, I'd love to, to offer it to you also. So please go over to my website, check out work with Dr. Trish Lee, QEG brain map. It's the first step and then neurofeedback. If that's out of reach in terms of finances, cause that's the main reason people don't do it. Or if it's not something you're interested in, you want to start with something at home at this point, please enroll in Brain Training 101. It's only $49, but you do have to purchase the Brain Training headband, not from me, but through me to get the best pricing and the best customer service because that company offers my people the best pricing and service. So please get it. If you sign up for Brain Training 101, the link for the headband is in that program. It's also at the bottom of my website. So you can train your brain at home, which is affordable, accessible, and anonymous. The three A's just like porn, but this one is healthy for you. And it sensitizes your brain instead of desensitizes your brain. And then we are moving in the right direction. So please check that out on my website. But this is what I wanted to tell my, my dear client who's already doing this, so he didn't want to hear that, is that his graphs show that his brain is using a healthier arousal pattern but for him it hasn't shown up yet and so I offered him some suggestions and I'm going to tell you them here in the third part but I just want to reiterate number two is you have to resensitize the reward center in your brain for many people it doesn't just come online by itself you have to work it out so if you want to get fit yes you have to stop eating unhealthy right? You have to stop consuming the stuff that is making you gain weight. So our analogy here is you have to stop consuming porn, sexual media, or sexual acting out because that's desensitizing your brain. That's making you gain the weight in our weight loss analogy. So you have to stop eating the bad stuff. So for some people, when they stop eating the bad stuff, they trim right down. For other people, they don't. Those people have to work out. So if you have you've stopped consuming porn, but your erectile dysfunction is still around, you need the rewire process. Get into the QEG brain map with me so I can tell you exactly what you need. And if that's not in the cards for you, at least get brain training 101 so you can start training your brain by yourself. You need to rewire your brain. Most people need to. You need to stop eating the junk food and you need to start working out to be able to get a healthy body. You have to stop consuming porn and sexual media, and you have to rewire your brain in the right direction to get healthy erections and orgasm and healthy sexuality because you're changing your baseline back to healthy arousal. So moving to number three for my client is we've already done that for him and we can see in the measurable data his brain's coming online beautifully, but he hasn't practiced healthy sexuality. So let's go to number three right now, the hardwire how to turn up the heat after you've defrosted the bedroom. So erectile dysfunction, I'm talking about it cavalierly for the sake of time mainly, but I don't want to do that. I want to pause here for a minute and tell you that if you've been struggling with erectile dysfunction or delayed ejaculation, it is a struggle. It creates so much performance anxiety. It creates the, the, polar opposite of healthy baseline arousal. It makes it so that you're in a stressed out state anytime you think about being with your honey, which unfortunately throws you back into porn or hypersexuality, and it all becomes a negative feedback loop that keeps you stuck. So I want to acknowledge that because I know this isn't easy, which is why I want to share with you, you have to stop desensitizing because you can't resensitize while you're desensitizing and you have to rewire your brain so it works better. But then you gotta start practicing healthy sexuality with your honey once you're no longer consuming super normal stimuli. What does that look like? What that looks like is creating, this is your brain hack for today. So I'm gonna give you two brain hacks. Here's number one, how to get your groove on with your honey and how to start getting it going. If it's 
been challenging for you for a while, if it's dead in the water. Number one is it's important to create time and space for physical intimacy. So this girl has what feels like a million children. There's always someone around, which is such a beautiful thing because I love them. But at the same time, Hubs and I have been married for 20 plus years. We would like a little alone time. And like I talked about on this podcast, I think last week or two weeks ago, I created alone time and we went away and his friend came with us who felt like a child outside my door, kiboshing my plan to spend some time alone with my man. But I came up with a plan to spend some time alone with my man. So I'm going to need to make a new plan to spend some time alone with my man. Honestly, I made some time to spend with my man today. I know you probably don't want to hear this. Then the dog fence guy shows up to fix the dog fence. And I'm like, dude, the window has closed. And then I texted him something funny about that. Haven't heard anything back from him on that funny text. Funny, sexually charged text. So the reason I'm telling you that and telling you a little TMI, a little too much information, is that if you want to start creating physical intimacy, you have to be intentional about it. So you have to stop doing all the wrong stuff, but you have to start doing some or all of the right stuff. And what that looks like is the easy way to start is time and space. So create some alone time. If you can't get it in your own home, find a way to go away for a night. Find a way for, you know, grandma and grandpa to come or find a way to plug your kids into a good movie and turn it up loud. Get creative. I've been creative for 20 plus years. That's why I have five and a half children. So get creative, but prioritize it. Your relationship and your physical intimacy has to become a priority. Create time for it and create physical space. And we know that what we're talking about here is a there needs to be arousal stimuli. So that's external. It should be external. It can be internal. It can be, you know, memory or recall of the healthy sort with your partner, but it should be visual. It should be tactile. It should be olfactory smell. And when you get that stimuli going and you create time and space, and then you, you get to be able to have a healthy interaction what that does is it brings your brain back into that medium speed or it's going to keep pulling your brain back to medium speed of calm focus now the reason that's important is because we know from research that this medium speed is kind of the perfect balance between sympathetic and parasympathetic branches in the nervous system so sympathetic is an uptick in arousal and that is necessary to achieve orgasm but you need a downtick in arousal of relaxation to be able to achieve an erection you need both of them so it's this perfect balance in the middle of feeling relaxed and calm yet focused so that you can have healthy baseline arousal levels baseline meaning you feel calm and focused most of your day and then now you cut out this time and you get some privacy you're more, you're more calm and you're more focused on your goal of being intimate so that you're able to increase that phasic dopamine spike. You get a little, not a 15 plus, you get a nine, which is healthy. And now you're able to have a healthy sexual interaction with your partner, with your honey. So specifically, what does that look like? I'm going to tell you specifically what it doesn't look like first. First, what it means is you have to become really aware of the Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde aspect of your porn influence sexual behaviors. So what that means is what is the highest arousal activities or behaviors in the bedroom, highest arousal might be those that are going to bring you back or they're going to spike dopamine at 15 because they're porn influenced. So when it comes to that, just start building awareness and it should be give and take. We should recognize that both partners won't find the exact same things arousing or exciting or enjoyable. 
that's part of the process and that's actually something that women desire based on science based on science women desire a man who knows what he wants in a healthy way and a man who understands that she has otherness and she might like other things and she might have her own arousal template and that's going to bring us to the next aspect of this brain hack but recognizing that so in your actual physical interaction make sure there's give and take make sure there's share make sure there's connection but it can still be fun and engaging and have high levels of pleasure up to 10 none of these 15 plus because you'll bring yourself back so become really aware of that and the connection piece is very important because what it does is it brings dopamine down a little bit, but it also includes serotonin and oxytocin. And we call that the happiness trifecta. So you're in a pleasurable experience, but it's also enjoyable. And it also makes you feel connected to the person that you're doing it with. That's the happiness trifecta. And it lasts longer. It doesn't hit as hard as a majorly big dopamine spike, but it lasts longer. It sustains you. And it actually makes you and your partner feel more connected, not disconnected, like objectified sex, even if it's with your partner can feel. And it makes your partner feel desired. It makes your partner glad to do the things that you find arousing. And you're glad to do the things that she finds arousing. Now, you have to practice that. You may have to practice it a hundred times before you're back in business in terms of an erection and orgasm in a timely fashion. Why? Because I already told you that neurons that fire together wire together. And unfortunately, you've been firing and wiring those neurons towards the easy button to 15 plus. So now that you've unwired that and you've rewired your brain back into the mode that it's ready to do this, it's not used to slowly building arousal and building it with pleasure and enjoyment and connectedness to your partner at level seven through nine, which is healthy arousal. So it's probably going to take some time and some practice for your brain to be able to start building these neural pathways. That's what neuroplasticity is. So it's the same thing going back to our weight loss example is that if you decide today that you're going to lose weight and you're going to get in shape, you can't just go, mm, I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to, I'm going to drop 40 pounds and I'm going to get in shape. No, you have to make that decision and then you have to commit to the plan. And the plan is stop consuming the thing that is making you be in the state that you are. That's our first step. Number two is you've got to hit the gym and start rewiring or hit the gym and start, you know, using the plasticity of your muscles to build bigger muscles. We're going to number two, hit the brain gym and start using neuroplasticity to build the muscles in your brain. Number three is you have to figure out how to build a foundation of a lifestyle of healthy eating, healthy activity, healthy exercise for the rest of your life and start doing that over and over and over. And then with practice, you build this foundation. So what we're talking about here is building the foundation. And this is one way that you can do it. This is very, very important. Now let's go back to another piece of this brain hack is if there's a problem or an issue in your relationship, which many times there is when porn consumption or hypersexuality or sexual acting out is involved, if there's any issue in your relationship, recognize that's going to impact your ability to feel that pleasure, enjoyability, and connection with your partner. It has to be addressed. All of it should be addressed. So the people who succeed in this journey the most are those that are communicating and interacting with their partner in an emotionally healthy way. That's why I'm always waxing poetic about increasing emotional intelligence. And what that means is you're able to show up in conversations and talk about the erectile dysfunction, not shine a spotlight on it, just acknowledge it so that then when you're practicing intimacy, the goal becomes we spent one hour being intimate with each other, not the goal is I need to get an erection and have an orgasm right away. That's the goal of the easy button. The new goal is to spend time sharing physical intimacy. And then that will lead to being able to build arousal without 
the easy button as you practice. But then if there's any bone of contention, uh, pun not intended, if there's any bone of contention between you and your partner, it needs to be talked about and put on the table and figured out. And if I know one thing from working in this field for a long time is that conversation is twice as difficult as everything else I've talked about in this podcast for most people. And I know it's even challenging for me and I know all this stuff and I've been practicing it for decades. Just the other day I had to have a conversation with my husband and we pulled up, we were in the car after a really nice day. Uh, it felt like that scene from old school where Will Ferrell's like, we have a big Saturday plan. We're going to Bed Bath & Beyond and then Ikea or whatever. So I had a Saturday plan of doing a couple things and the hubs wanted to come along with me. We had a really nice day. Got some food, got some new lighting. What else did we do? Picked up my daughter from horse, uh, from the barn. It was great. But we're pulling in and something had happened where I'm like earlier in the day, nothing big, but I was feeling it. It was, it was tweaking in my brain a little. And so I'm like, dang, that thing's tweaking my brain a little. I need to talk to him about it. So check this out. Classic, right? We pull in, I'm like, can I ask you something about the thing you said earlier? He gets defensive immediately. Yeah, he's all defensive. And then I said something like, you know, we need to work on this because I do not want to have to deal with this long term. Guess what he says? Don't threaten me. That's what he says. So we know stress activation is fight, flight, freeze, or fawn. My man, he always goes to fight. And I know this. My typical is flight or fawn. So flight means something gets difficult. I will bolt out of the room, out of the house. That's my old one. My new one is and I, I work on these all the time. My new one is I just pretend that that's not happening. Fawning is you just kind of dance around life pretending that elephant in the room isn't there. So this man goes, don't threaten me. Are you threatening me? Don't threaten me. I go, babe, I'm not threatening you. I'm just trying to talk to you about it. And thankfully that man melted and his fight response, which is his old programming. So I didn't get mad. I didn't buy into it. It melted and he's like, I see what you're saying about that. And he's like, do you want me to do this? And I'm like, I'm not saying I want you to do anything. I'm just trying to communicate to you how I feel about that. It's tweaking my brain. What you do with that is up to you because I don't ever tell him what to do. We've, I never did. And plus we've grown way past that, but I never did that in the first place. What you do with that information, but I, and then when I said, what you do with it is up to you, but I want you to know how I feel about it because if it persists, I will continue to feel bad about it and I will not be staying in that situation because that's how far I've come. All of it was completely uncomfortable for me and him because we are not pros at this. We are just ahead of the journey of most people because I keep putting us in the situation where we get to practice. So when this stuff tweaks my brain, I show up. We had a different situation a couple weeks ago where uh, another thing I know it was something with the kids and I'm like, your approach is off, babe. And he was not into hearing that went into fight mode. And then he said something nasty to me and he's a wonderful man, but you know how we all have this says something nasty. And I felt my body wanting to leave the room. I can feel it now. I can feel the same feeling. And I just stayed. And I said, kindly, that's not going to happen again. Cause it was a little threat. And but I, I was resisting leaving and I stayed and I check it in to make sure my energy, okay, I'm not mad. I get why he's doing that because that's his, his old programming. I'm a little ahead of the journey breaking the programming than he is. I know this. So now I feel like I want to bolt because he just threatened me on purpose to get me to do the old dance. But I'm like, I'm not doing that dance anymore. So... I stayed and I made soft eye contact with him, not hard eye contact, didn't break. And you know what? And it was about how he was talking to the kids. He repelled them. He made them go upstairs by saying some stuff. And, you know, they're all like, we out of here because I'm not dealing with that. And I'm like, you know, you're repelling the kids. But he didn't want my feedback on that. And, you know, I was just and I always ask, may I, off, may I tell, talk to you about this? You know, anyway. I stayed and he ended up getting up and walking away and not in a mad way, just in a, we're done with this. I will think of that way. I will think about that way. 
so cool because I'm like old programming from the past broken yet again because I took the opportunity as it arose even though I didn't want to every time the opportunity arises I don't want to just so you know every time the opportunity arises for you you're not going to want to either but if you take it you evolve and that's the point of this episode so if you have a problem in your relationship you got to take all the opportunities and you're going to need to create an opportunity right now to talk about the sexual dysfunction and what your goal is, what you want to happen, and then get intentional and set your sight on that goal and make it happen. Start working towards it. And when you do, you're gonna find that combined with brain training and the lack of desensitization, your brain is gonna resensitize itself. And in this safe, comfortable environment with your honey, it's gonna come online. If that environment is not safe and comfortable, it's gonna put your brain into wired and tired wired especially so if you're feeling anxious about performing it is the polar opposite brain pattern of calm focus which is what is necessary to achieve erections and orgasm so that's the bottom line so you have to hardwire your brain through your interactions with your partner and they will come online and if you don't have a partner, you want to attract a partner to you and practice building intimacy over time. Polar opposite of the easy button. Now I'm going to give you brain hack number two very quickly because I don't totally suggest this, but if you don't have a partner or if you can't get the conversation going with your partner, but you want to start building arousal, I have a technique that I call masturbation meditation. It's loaded for anybody who's desensitized their brain. So it comes with a big red warning sign. The warning sign is don't use this frequently because you are not rewiring your brain back to healthy sexuality with a partner. It's still sexuality with yourself. And that is not the way sexuality is designed. Sexuality is shared between two people. So the idea here is you stay with the sensations in your body and you again build arousal over time staying out of fantasy not using porn not using external 15 plus stimuli trying to rewire and reboot the system and to bring online arousal at a level seven eight or nine and thinking about your partner or the potential partner is a way for you to also kind of stay with that healthy imagination as one of the stimuli so that you can attempt to kind of get that spark going. But again, I don't really recommend it in this case. I recommend that you focus on sexuality with your partner. And if you don't have a partner, focus on attracting a partner because that's most people's goal. Get out there and build intimacy in the other ways by sharing emotionally and connecting and remember that arousal baseline of feeling calm and focused in your entire life is also necessary. So if you're really stressed out or if you're disengaged and you're not on purpose, those things need to be figured out in your life because that's what creates the healthy arousal baseline. All of that is in the rewire section of my 90 day program. So if you are feeling particularly anxious and stressed out, your brain needs to be rewired more. You gotta go back to the rewire section before you can get to this hardwire section. And in the 90 day program, there is a toolbox of unwiring and rewiring your brain. The majority of that program is focused on the unwire and the rewire. And there really is a nice hardwire section for building the foundation also. But get the help that you need because this is just one suggestion out of 100. Okay. I'm going to wrap it up. If you need help in this journey, please visit me at drtrishley.com. There are programs in the Porn Brain Rewire section. There's the digital 90 day program. You can add coaching with Coach Zach Carter. You can get the brain assessment with me under Work with Dr. Trish Lee, which can lead to neurofeedback coaching, or you can train your brain by yourself. I have a new erectile dysfunction program coming out soon. I'm very excited about it. I've been working on it for months. So I'll let you know when that's available. Um, it'll be on a top tab on my website. So if it's not there yet, it's coming soon. And if it is there, go over there and you can check out that um, program, that digital program also, because it gives you all the tools of figuring out desensitization, resensitization, and 
ready, set, go in the bedroom through the five rewire R's for erectile dysfunction. And there's a whole um, lesson on DE and PE in that program also. Okay, so until next time, I'm here for you. I would love to help you. If you are struggling with erectile dysfunction, this is no joke and you likely need more help, please go to my website. And until next time, control your brain or it'll control you.